Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to A Reason for Hope Candid. This week, our topic is titled Dumped for Seminary. And, uh, you know, we have a little Google Doc with topics that we might talk about. And uh, on our website, uh, I looked at the analytics and pretty frequently in the top 10 viewed pages, there is a blog post called My Boyfriend Wants to Be a Priest. (laughs) And we were in a meeting and I said, maybe people want to talk about this. So we figured we'd make a podcast out of it. Um, So (laughs) I I believe that Alanis, you've you've heard some stories that deal with this topic. I have. I have several friends who were dumped for the seminary. Wow. And I've also heard a lot of stories of just uh, people who are married now, but it was just like such a struggle in the beginning stages of their relationship because they didn't know for sure if the Lord was calling them mm. to be a priest or into marriage. So, so you're saying that they didn't necessarily break up and the, the significant other didn't become a priest. Yeah. It was just a road, like a hurdle that they had to get over. Yeah. Gotcha. And I feel like it's usually the case in most relationships yeah. when the guy doesn't discern before he enters the relationship. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Sure. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Now, there's a couple questions here. One of the questions was, do you think every man should discern becoming a priest? Mm. Which kind of just led to what you said, like discerning before you go into a relationship. Um, Because that could present a roadblock or a hurdle. Right. A a struggle, perhaps, that might have been avoided. Right. I think the same question can be asked of, of women, too. True. You know, yeah, like, yeah. That's not just a one-way thing. Yeah. yeah. Being called to a different vocation of holy life. Yeah. It's interesting though, because I, I don't think it's the inverse problem isn't really happening. And maybe I'm sure it has happened where the woman breaks up with the guy to enter the convent, but I think it's much more rare. Mm-hmm. And it may even speak into just like the different desires of man and woman, because a woman desires to be seen, known, and loved. Like that's her number one desire. Mm. So when we have that in a relationship, it's kind of difficult for us to find ourselves continuing to yearn for that. And maybe I'm sure that there are scenarios where that's the case. But then for men, for you guys, your deepest desire is like to be a hero, to like be a man and like to provide. <laughs> the, like the, I was going to be like, yeah, that's Do you right. disagree? Like the heart of a man is like no, I think you want to be. Um, I think as, provider, I, as, provider, as I get older, provider. I have that. Yeah. Oh, a million percent. Yeah. Especially as, definitely. as, like, as a man matures. Like a yeah, for yeah. greatness. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Especially in terms of, yeah, to, whether it's communal sort of leadership or in the family mm-hmm. or even as a priest, like a spiritual father, yeah. spiritual leader. Yeah. yeah. I think you're right, Alanis. Yeah. Every man has the desire deep down inside to somewhat in some sort of situation be a provider a leader Mm -hmm. you know a lover and a protector which Mm -hmm. could be fulfilled in marriage like one thousand percent but i think like what is more heroic than laying your down your life down for god Mm. so i think that's where maybe in the back of men's minds whenever they have that questioning of like maybe i am called to be a priest it's because they want greatness and that's like the I mean, in my mind, I think that's such a wonderful vocation, but mm. yes. not to diminish the vocation of marriage. Yeah. I think <clears throat> this reminds me of a conversation I had with, once again, <laughs> Dr. 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 David Heideck. <laughs> David Dr. Heideck. How many minutes? Four minutes, 44 seconds it took. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. We're going to keep doing this. Yeah, yeah. Four minutes, 44 yeah. seconds. So um, this was a while back, two, three years ago, maybe. Yeah, so St. Paul said... In the first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 7, um, I say, I wish you were all in the same state as myself, but each of us has his own endowment from God, one to live in this way, another in that. To the unmarried and to the widows, I would say that they will do well to remain in the same state as myself. But if they have not the gift of continence, let them marry. Better to marry than to feel the heat of passion. For those who are who have married already, the precept holds, which is the Lord's precept, not mine. The wife is not to leave her husband, um, et cetera, et cetera. Oof. So, obviously, if, if you're married, stay married. And if if you're unmarried, single, um, or dating, <laughs> and and but not yet married, 
definitely consider that vocation. I think I think this speaks to what you were saying, Alanis, that that there should be some discernment in light of this scripture, in light of the word of God here uh, coming to, to us through St. Paul, that there should be some discernment uh, to, and St. Paul says, to the unmarried and to widows. So that's men and women alike, mm-hmm. um, that there should be some discernment to the religious life. Right. Mm. Um, but going back to what Dr. Hydock said about marriage being a compromise, again, I think that speaks to the scripture here. But at the same time, you know, why would Jesus institute the sacrament of marriage if there, if people were not meant to to marry? I mean, it, it's a sacrament because every sacrament reflects uh, spiritually something that happens in the physical life. So baptism is is you know we're born of water and spirit, um, just as we have to be born to a physical life. So we have to be born a physical life to lead a physical life. And we have to be born of a spiritual life to lead a spiritual life. We need physical nourishment, bread, but we also need spiritual nour- nourishment, the Eucharist. And so too, uh, and th- this I'm sort of recollecting from f- some of Fulton Sheen's talks here, but I'm sure this wisdom goes way further back than him. The The propagation of society, there has there has to be that within the physical order, um, but also there there has to be that within the spiritual order to mm-hmm. to, to build up the kingdom of heaven, so to speak, um, mm-hmm. quite literally, actually. And so that's the sacrament of marriage. And so too, just has, as there has to be a, a political institution to keep the law, keep the order in the land, in, in physical reality, there also has to be a spiritual government, a spiritual political order to keep the spiritual order and, and law. So and that's, that's the vocation to holy orders. But again, in light of the scripture, I do think, and in light of what David, uh, you know, David was saying, I think, I think it, I would agree that everybody should at least discern, you know, if if there is a vocation to holy orders. Yeah. But but I don't know if that should be the that every single yeah. guy or yeah. should do that. That like that makes me think of <clears throat> like when we were kids, we probably knew from a pretty young age like I'm going to be a musician. Mm. Yeah. Like I'm being I'm I have a gift. Yeah. I'm going to to use it. And yeah. like, this is what I'm going to do. And I think, I feel like I kind of felt that way, not like when I was younger, but I always knew that like, I'm going to get married and have a family. Yeah. Mm. So like, mm-hmm. should I be like, oh, so so if you know that, then is there need for discernment? I guess is the question. If you feel like you're being called to that vocation, the vocation of marriage, just like some some people that we know were like 16, they were like, I'm going to be a priest. Mm. I am going to be right. a priest. Yeah. And then they, and most of them became priests. Yeah. So I think if you know from like a young age that like God put you on a path that you're going to follow, yeah. Um, that you, I guess it feels natural to follow it, but I think there is part of it that it's it's hard to discern and it's it's probably like a lot of deciphering when your own voice ends and the Holy Spirit begins. Hmm. Yeah. So is it like, oh, well, I want this for myself right. or yes. God wants this for me. And I yeah. think I, I know people that were in the opposite situation, not so much that um, they left a uh, relationship to go to the priesthood, but had been in the process of becoming a priest and actually were like, I, this is not what I'm supposed to be doing mm. and, and switched and left. And now... Most of them were really gifted with musical ability or some creative thing that they are now using to evangelize for God, but they're not yeah. priests and they, they have families and stuff. So I think it's, I think the thing that was probably hardest for them was discerning, is this me talking or is this God talking? Right. Because mm. conviction is real. And I feel like people are blessed with that conviction at an mm. early age, like you were saying, whether mm. it's to the priesthood or to marriage. Um, but I feel like it's important to discern whether that's your will and if you're configuring it to the will of the father. Yeah. Um, so even, I, I think let's define discernment in this case because Please. we don't have to like fully enter into the seminary and be like, oh, I'm discerning and I'm gonna stay yeah. here for like three years and see if this is what the Lord is calling me to. But discerning mm-hmm. could look like a tiny step and see if there's peace in that. So you can go to a come and see. Um, 
pray about it. But I would, I actually, I think you, it should be a combination of like prayer and action. You should mm. just stay stuck in that perpetual state of prayer. Because I think a lot of guys are like, I'm discerning to be a priest, but they've just been praying about it for the past five years. And mm. they're just like stringing women, women along and then using that as an excuse to like, get rid of them at a certain point but (laughs) wow that's crazy if you're discerning to be a priest wouldn't part of that be not being in relationship right that would be part of the discerning right you would think but interesting so yeah i think that's crazy i think it's it's particular to each person whether Mm, you should discern it or not and trust your conviction Mm. you shouldn't force someone else to discern something that they don't feel called to. But I think for the most part, the majority of people should discern that af- avenue. Yeah. 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 I, and and I think um, the people around that person, everybody should, I, I think, be helping each other to discern in a way, especially within the, f- the familial unit. And we, we're at, here at Array of Hope, we're working on a film right now called Vocation, that should be out pretty soon. Uh, I think all the filming is pretty much done. Mm-hmm. It's just being edited, in which uh, a bunch of priests and and even some some married uh, people uh, are are interviewed. Yep. In regards to their vocations, and um, a big part of the film is is sort of encouraging. And, and a, a, um, a a one of the reasons the film came about was was to help f- encourage families and especially parents mm-hmm. to always be constantly really discerning what God wants for their child. So mm. if 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 let's say, you know, you're you're at church with your with your young family and your I don't know, your your 10-year-old son seems to have a real devotion to the Eucharist and is just really prayerful and just seems to be very very reflective, uh melancholic, mm-hmm. you know, whatever it might be. Uh, has a real devotion to the Blessed Sacrament by the grace of God, that 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 son or daughter may be geared to the discerning a a you know a, a vocation to holy orders. Um, I think yeah I think or and then the opposite you know if 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 in through prayer maybe God's revealing to you as a parent that that maybe maybe the you know, your children are, are geared towards marriage. I think the the family really should be involved in that, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm. Agreed. Yeah. Um, I, I wanted to ask you guys if you think that peace is a sure sign that you are following God's will. And that, that mm-hmm. might be a very controversial question or like maybe even a stupid question. But I, I ask this because... Um, I'm reading uh, Sister Faustina's diary right now, St. Faustina's diary. And although she had already discerned her vocation um, to uh, her novitiate, um, she for, for several years experienced great torment and like great anxiety, so much so that at a certain point she was healed of it, but she had physical sort of remnants of that spiritual torture in a way it was was, she explained it as like spiritual torture Mm. and she explained herself as as an abyss of misery but lord i know that anything because i am an abyss of misery anything good that's within me is only from you and so you are an abyss of mercy um so of course she found peace in that but it doesn't it doesn't necessarily mean that she was at peace while going through these trials from God. And mm. she even reflects that while going through these trials, she she after being healed from spiritual torture, torment essentially, she was able to see back and reflect that at those moments when she felt abandoned by God, those were the moments when God was the mo- was the closest to her. Mm. Which interesting. is super interesting. And so I I at, at the risk of, of maybe leading people astray, which I certainly don't want to do in terms of discernment, mm. I think it's, again, important to, to, yeah, I think peace has a lot to do with discernment. Yeah. But I also think there, there should also be a struggle mm. as well. Like, I don't think it's always going to be peaceful. Well, yeah, what's the saying that, like, nothing good comes easy, right? Yeah. Mm. And I think it's that mm. if you have the perseverance to go through the things that are hard, 
because you're convicted to that, I feel like that's when you know, like, I, even though this is really hard, I have to be doing this. And I don't know. I feel like, I feel like there's peace in knowing that, like kind of what you're yeah. saying with St. Faustina yeah. is that she knew she had peace, even though she was going through torment, that like, this is what she was supposed mm -hmm. to be doing. Mm -hmm. And I think that like, it's a feeling that Good point. Yeah. you have to reflect on and see if you're having that feeling or not. Mm. Yeah. But I feel like somebody like St. Faustina, she was certain that that was what she was doing. And I think that's part of the discernment of figuring out like, is this what I'm supposed, is this God want, is this what God wants me to be doing? Yeah. Yeah. Does does this help me to rely on him more mm. than 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 relying on myself, essentially? Right, because like uh, being, I have no experience being a priest, but maybe <laughs> being a priest for somebody is peaceful, but is that peacefulness kind of just like, oh, this is easy. Like, I don't have to, not saying that it's easy, mm -hmm. but like, I'm not good in relationships, so this is like an easier thing for me right. to do. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. But would being a father and a spouse have brought him closer to God and made him like, like you were saying in your presentation the other day, like suffer a little bit more because God yeah, wants man. us to be happy, but like sometimes we have to suffer to be more like him, you know? Dude, I like that, that part of her diary like blew me away and mm. we've heard it so many times, but the, the part I, I was touching on was, was when she was, she she's, has this amazing like mystical ability to not only have locutions of Christ, which of course this is all for, by the power of God, her her ability, and she admits that, but she would also be able to see into the internal life of other people. Um, and so she was able to see into the internal life at certain times when Christ allowed of her spiritual director, mm -hmm. uh, or at least one of them, uh, I think his name is Father Sapaco. And he saw, I'm sorry, she saw that God was asking him to do something and he was being obedient to it but then she was able to have a mystical insight into seeing that god was getting in the way of hit of the priest being able to do what god was asking him to do like purposefully purposefully mm. and she said she asked the lord why are you doing this and he said it's not for the success but for the suffering that I give reward. And that just blew my mind. And and it's so like contrary to what the world would would think of as as good, you know, or something yeah. that God would permit, a good God would permit. Yeah. But Faustina uh, consistently admits that that you know th these are mysteries, but they're holy mysteries that we have to submit to. And and I guess a further reflection is like if you're being attacked, we often say this here, mm -hmm. if you're being spiritually attacked, mm -hmm. which she was, and and we often are, we all are, then that usually means you're, but, but, but you're relying on the grace of God to get you through that and you're not falling into mortal sin, that you're actually, you're doing something right. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're, you're on the right path. So I remember, I remember in discerning for marriage, I've, I've been married since uh, August, in discerning for marriage, a lot of spiritual attacks, moments, many moments of peace, many, and especially at the time, uh, interestingly enough, when like the day of the, the wedding and the night before, like I slept like a rock, God, man. Dude, you were wow. so chill. <laughs> I was like, what? Uh, you were just like yeah. sitting up front and like the, the photographers coming up to you being like, oh, women are always late. Yeah, but, yeah. And, and you're just like, whatever. Yeah, Sarah was 20 minutes late. Like, yeah, you're like, whatever. And I was like, oh my God. I, I was like, I knew she was coming, <laughs> yeah. but I was like, oh man, like that would be, that's going to be me. Cause Ken's is always late. And I was like, I like, you don't want to wait any longer, No, mm. but you were like cool as a cucumber. I think Ken's even said, she was like, why is Jack so calm? Thanks bro. Mm. Thanks bro. Well, and, but, but there are plenty of times we were engaged for over a year, mm. but plenty of times spiritual attacks, spiritual attacks. Can you elaborate on that? I'm trying Being to, I'm trying to engaged remember. Engaged currently. Mm. I'd yeah. like to, I'd like to. Yeah, um, I think uh, just like, yeah, attacks towards temptations, mm -hmm. you know, towards sin, mm -hmm. especially attacks of, of, um, I don't want to say fear, something, yeah, fear, absolutely. Like, and that's, that's, that was my fault giving into the fear mm. of, of married life to a certain degree, mm. because I once heard 
my pastor say to me when we were talking about vocations that, and I asked him, what do you, what do you think is harder, marriage or, or the priesthood for, for men? He for said marriage. He said, yeah, he said marriage 100% is harder. Really? Because, and, and that's, the, you know, the, I believe that. It's, it's perhaps relative. But the reason he said that, he gave the reasoning, was because there are three people involved in a marriage, mm. or there are two people involved in in holy in religious life mm. because f in religious life it's just you and Jesus mm -hmm. mm. but in married married life be, and especially before you have kids it's you your spouse and Jesus mm. and of course you have the barometer of Jesus to 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 like attain uh, to meet mm. uh, and set, set sort of a set guidelines to love essentially mm. but but you both have to be working. It's just another um, a person to that's thrown into the equation. Yeah, that and, you have and, to keep happy. Yeah, you know, like and but you also have to keep holy. Right, you have to look out right. for each other, and well, it's like a triangle. I'm, I'm saying that, like, yes, you have to keep your spouse happy, but you have to keep God happy too. So first and foremost, you're going God. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your Father Richard's homily at your wedding flipped the switch in my mind mm. that I was like. I've never looked at marriage that way, and I want to be married now. Wow. What, what he explained was it, what it was so it? well about like, you know, when when being Christ for each other, that, yeah. but also like being in relationship, like in a marriage and having Christ in your marriage. Mm. I always like, how does that work? Mm. And the way that he explained it, I was just like, oh man, yeah, wow, yeah, that's good. Well, there's this. Um, I remember hearing about this on a podcast somewhere where I, I think it's a Swedish tradition, I, I forget, but like someone went to a wedding in Sweden or something and, they, and the couple was, was holding a candle with both their hands above their heads. Mm. And it symbolized, and the, and the light symbolized Christ essentially, truth, mm. beauty, goodness, mm. love. Mm. But the fact that they were both holding it and they, but it was above their heads meant that they had to first and foremost put the light above them and that the, mm. the light, of Christ essentially is above them. And so again, it's like it's like a triangle. So this is classic description is that if the the two bottom uh acute angles mm -hmm. are are, you know, the the husband and the wife, the the closer they get to God at the top, the closer they are to each other. Mm -hmm. And the the better the marriage will will turn out. Mm -hmm. But but you know, I feel like we've totally gotten off the subject. Maybe not. We're talking <laughs> about discernment. More about marriage than um, the vocation to seminary. Yeah. We should have had a priest we, we on talk, for this. We talked, well, I think we, we should have. Or somebody I mean, who's not, uh, yeah. Well, looping it back to being dumb for the seminary. Please. Um, I guess what you're saying with St. Faustina is that mm. the Lord can sometimes allow um, something that's uncomfortable for you. Yes, yes. For your own sake, for the greater glory of God, I guess, and so in, for the glorification of Pur the purification of yourself, for the yeah. purification mm -hmm. of and the yourself. glorification of God. Yeah. Okay, interesting. So, I guess in that situation, I know for the woman, it could be like abs like heart wrenching to be dumped, because sure, yeah. I mean, oh, in right. any other situation, it's like if you're getting dumped for a woman, it's like you can have anger towards the man and the woman. Oh wow! But like, I never even you can't even be mad at God or that mm. situation because it's like you should be happy for him. And it's like I was talking to my friend about this. She was dumped twice for the seminary. Oh my gosh! Wow. God bless her soul. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Um, she that's said cr that's it's, wow. It's very sad. Mm. Um, mm. but she was saying that. Oh man, I lost my train of thought. Your friend uh, has been dumped twice. Yes. For the seminary. Yeah. Um, you were saying before that, that it's hard on oh, the girl because you can't be you. mad at somebody else. I never thought of it that way. Yeah. And she was saying that everyone was like encouraging the breakup in a way and was so happy for him mm. because he was entering into this vocation that is so heroic and so bold and so beautiful. So it wasn't even like she could mourn the loss because everyone was kind of celebrating it. Mm. So. Wow. That's that's tough. That's hard. But it's interesting to hear that like God almost allowed it in a sense and mm. not even allowed it but almost like willed it. Mm. Cuz if that's what he's truly calling him to, then the heartbreak needs to be there. And mm. uh, have you guys seen the movie Father Stu? I, I was yet. just thinking about that because yes. that's that's what happened. Yes. And when oh, we had this topic, yeah. I never even came into my mind until you just said that that's and so I was like funny. Yeah, that's I was exactly just reminded what happened too. in Father Stu. 
Yeah. Which fathers do? Two fathers do. Well, to his girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> before he was a priest. Which is, I'm sure, really hard. And also Pope John Paul II, if you've seen his movie, mm, he was in a relationship before he joined, entered the priesthood. So wow. I think this is a very common thing that happens. The priest at my parish was as well. Really? Yeah. Uh-huh. It's always so awkward when priests talk about their past relationships. Yeah. I'm some, like, I don't want to know that. <laughs> yeah, but I think, I think what he said was like they had a, a very good relationship and like nothing was wrong. Uh, it was just like, I think yes. I'm being called to Can I actually do something quote else? something that my friend said? Sure. Yeah. She said in both situations, both of the guys said, I've got the house, I've got the car, I've got the job, I've got the girl but it still feels like something is missing. Mm. And so it's almost like they curate these perfect lives and they're unfulfilled. And mm. it just like adds so much pressure as a woman or not even pressure, but just like so much pain to know that you weren't enough. Mm. But it's like you're competing with God. So it's right. like you can't even, you can't <laughs> right. even be upset about it. So yeah. it's a catch well, that's 22. Like, that's like Dr. Yes. Dr. Ray Garendi said, when parents are hard on themselves for not, uh, when their kids stray from the faith. Mm. Yeah. He said, do you think that like every like everybody that God talked to, he turned into believers to follow mm. him and got them to heaven? If he can't do it, how are you supposed to do it? Like that's mm. almost an insult to God being like, oh, well I should, my kids should listen to me. Right. They should, I should be able to get them to heaven. So it's kind of that same situation of like, yeah. you're, we're never gonna be on that equal plane. It doesn't make it any less difficult right. for the dump B, the dump yeah the dumpy yeah. right yeah the dumpy the but dumped again it goes back to that that quote from you know sister faustina's diary it's not for the success but mm. for the suffering that i give reward and those were words mm. given to her from jesus directly from jesus and not that it, it's not like okay i'm just i'm not gonna try anymore no, it's not that at yeah. all it's we we try but in even in our failings when we try our best and in our failings we we suffer because of that the Lord sees that and the Lord, you know, will certainly reward us yes. in heaven for 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 uniting ourselves to to his suffering, his cross. Because again, that's you know, it's again, it's totally contrary to the world, but to suffer, to be hum humiliated mm -hmm. is to be more like him on the cross. Mm. And so and, and that and as he said, that was the greatest act of love. And so to and so if if there's a hierarchy of love, mm. then we need to strive for the the heights of love. And yeah. So Alanis, has your friend who has been dumped twice by for the seminary? Yeah. Has, is she? You said some of them are married now. Is she married? No. Okay. She just got in a new relationship. Okay. <laughs> and she made sure Prayers. to preface. Oh, good. <laughs> Have you, Have you discerned this? And yeah. the thing is, with the second relationship, wow. she she prefaced that, mm. and it so happened. So I think maybe there that was so was, many. Maybe it, it planted a seed oh, in that guy's gosh, head or heart, and he didn't know. <laughs> he, he maybe he was like Jack and I that we were just like, oh no, like I'm gonna get married and have a family, and maybe he thought that, and then she she maybe the Holy Spirit influenced her to bring it up, and maybe <gasps> it got his wheels turning. Yeah, maybe. I don't know, but she's no she's happy in a new rel her, relationship. That's good. Now. Praise well, God. I, if we're saying that through suffering purifies your soul, glorifies God, the relationship she ends up in, I'm sure, will be fantastic. True. Right. Yeah, better than I she go through all of that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You better than that? she could have ever imagined. Yeah. We pray. Yes. Amen. Amen. I think that's a good way to end it, y'all. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see you guys next time. <laughs>